What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about an early sign, another early sign, really, that GTA 6 is going to be massive. Now, I do, as we get closer and we got some time, right, I want to talk about other ways that GTA 6 can change the industry, right, reinvent itself, and I, I really, uh, I'm thinking of ideas for that. I think those are going to be some fun videos. But one thing, there was a statement or just, you know, kind of an interview going on with Xbox a few weeks ago. And they talked about almost like respecting games as space. So I want to read that quote out and I want to kind of, you know, expand upon it. And that is, you know, the early sign, I believe, that everybody is aware just how big GTA 6 is. And that's now. That's, you know, not even in the calendar year that the game is releasing in. So honestly, I think there is a little bit of clickbait going on here. Uh, GTA 6 release date has made Xbox very jumpy, Microsoft confirms that's not exactly true i think that's a clickbait headline but whatever i guess i want to read what matt booty actually said he said i think many across the industry are of course going to plan around gta 6 and we're all looking forward to that game which should be amazing then he kind of talked about his own games and he said for us i think the issue is as much making sure we don't step on ourselves we have a very big portfolio we have a pretty big lineup through the fall and through the spring and we certainly want to make sure that every game is given space and has got the opportunity to shine. So, you know, honestly, like most of what he says is, is kind of self-reflective versus going after GTA. So I do think that was just a clickbait type thing. But he does acknowledge it. And that's the thing I really want to latch on to. Now, you know, not, not trying to overreach for this video, but it's something that I think we've all known. It's something that I think you're going to see so much. And it is interesting because, you know, again, while I think he kind of deflects and goes on his own stuff... I do think Xbox is a company that's also going to be aware of it, just like PlayStation, just like all of them. And that should, like, that to me sends a message. But say, like, a Lollipop Chainsaw, you know, remaster or an Epic Mickey, or, you know, pick kind of like a mid tier game that's coming out this fall, this fall, okay? You know if those games come out next fall, they are getting the hell away you know, from GTA 6. And I do want to talk about what getting away from it means. Uh, I, we'll get there in this video. You expect that. You expect that. But when a Ubisoft will move Assassin's Creed away from it, when Call of Duty might move its... You know, this is speculation. We don't know this for sure. But if Call of Duty moves itself away, if PlayStation moves itself away, if Xbox... Now, I think all of those things are going to happen. I truly... If you look back... And GTA 5, you know, came out kind of a different era. But if you look back at GTA 5, even Red Dead 2 to an extent, and you kind of project it for GTA 6, it's going to have weeks on its own. This is something I want to say, you know, in this video. GTA 6, I do believe, is going to have at least two to three weeks where no game, no game is coming out. That might mean, so it comes out one week, right? And the week before, the week of, and the week after are completely clear. There is no game almost on planet Earth. Now, maybe there'll be like some Steam indie games, right? But no game that has like a sizable name will be in that period the week before, the week of, the week after. And I, that's what I fully expect. And I, you know, again, you expect it from the lollipop chainsaw, like the, the mid-tier type games. But I guarantee you, if Death Stranding 2 is coming out around that time, it's getting out of there. I guarantee you, Fable, Gears of War, huge Xbox games. Now, Death Stranding is a pretty big game for PlayStation 2, but, you know, Gears of War, Fable, these are big. They're moving the heck out of the way, too. There, there's no way. Call of Duty, that one's interesting because it doesn't come close to GTA, but it is, like, normally the Titan every year. Like, Call of Duty is generally the game to beat, I guess, unless, like, a Hogwarts Legacy comes out, right? But, I mean, you know, Call of Duty is pretty big, and I guess technically that is through Xbox, so that, that still, uh, you know, counts for it. I truly believe that. Now, again, you know, he he mentions it, and then he immediately goes into, well, he, he, he kind of does, like, the whole PR talk where it's like, you know, we want all games to have, like, the chance to shine, and, you know, people are very excited for GTA. I'm sure people are excited for it, but the fact that he even acknowledges it, I believe means they know they're not putting one of their games out around the same time as GTA. And and by the way, like why is that so big? That doesn't like it happens to an extent. We just saw that technically with Lost Records Bloom and Rage, uh, kind of a don't nod, you know, choice based thing, very life is strange esque. It delays itself into 2025 because of Life is Strange, and it acknowledges it. It says it's because of Life is Strange. We want to give the two games time to breathe. It does happen, and I think it actually happens more than we think it does. It's just that companies often don't admit to it, probably because they just don't want to say, hey, you know, we know this game is very similar to that game. We know you're excited about that game. So, like, we want to give ourselves basically a chance to survive. I do think that happens, and, and I think oftentimes, 
I mean, it is often because of polish or because, you know, they need more time to work on the game. But I do think sometimes it's to avoid competition, which I don't think is a bad thing. I think that's smart, and I think more developers should uh, should kind of admit to it, and they really don't. But with GTA, it's going to be all of them, all of them. And that's, to me, what I find the most interesting because, you know, the fall is always packed. It's always insanely packed, right? If GTA comes out October of next year, you know, October is generally a busy month. Uh, this year, September, September's got like seven, eight, nine games of pretty strong name recognition coming out in September. November is normally a pretty huge month for gaming as well. So any of them, you know, if GTA 6 comes out September, October, November, this is what I find interesting, right? I think it's going to impact four to six big games. That's like the th fun thing, uh, kind of like a, a thought pro a thought exercise almost, right? In my head, where it's like, what games is it going to impact? Like, I, And I think, honestly, Death Stranding 2 for PlayStation is a pretty good, um, like, reasonable expectation that it would it would impact. I think something like a Fable or, you know, a Gears of War, whatever the big Xbox 2025 uh, fall game is. Battlefield, maybe, of next year would get impacted. Call of Duty would get impacted. If Assassin's Creed is doing the yearly thing, which it probably is, Assassin's Creed might be impacted. You know, now, they might all be in different months, so, like, it's not 100% uh, for sure, but I just listed five, and that's just off the top of my head. I, I feel like there's going to be quite a few games that are going to have to move uh, completely out of GTA 6's way, and it's going to just be fun. It it's it's kind of just like the sport, right? Like, it's nothing against any of these games. It's like, we all know how big GTA GTA 6 is going to be, you're, you're not going to put yourself out the same time as it because it just, it kind of dominates, right? So just wanted to, you know, throw that video out, see what you guys think of it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel, bell icons are on. I hope to see you all on the next one.